Hey everybody, welcome to the weekly reading. I am using my energy cards. Um, whew, it's chilly down here. I, um, it, what was I gonna say? Okay, I was gonna talk about the energy. I feel like the collective as a whole is very ignited on an inner level in some way, bringing us deeper or giving us an opportunity to go deeper into our emotions. So it's like we are, I'll give you an example. Okay, I, it used to be a lot easier for me to keep my thoughts super positive. Um, I would dip down, but it would be, you know, I could change my thoughts quicker and um, move forward uh, with more of a positive vibration sooner. So what I'm trying to say is it feels like, and you can let me know if you agree, it feels as if the energy we are experiencing is on such a deep level. So if you think about layers of an onion and we can go through different layers, the energy right now is penetrating to the core. This is gonna sound gross, but the analogy they're giving me right now is like a wart. And you know, as a kid, I used to get warts on my feet all the time and I'd have to get them burnt off or frozen off. It was a really painful situation. And, and depending on how deep that wart was, I needed to go several times and it would be hard to walk, it'd be hurt to walk after. Okay, they're wanting me to share this story. So as a teen, I had this wart on my heel that was so deep and anytime I would go to get it burnt off, it would be so painful to walk. And I remember like, my parents were really busy. My dad was for sure not available. And my mom was like, you're a big girl. You can take the bus. You are fine. I would have to take like two different buses. And so I would have this super painful uh, process and then need to walk to the bus stop in so much pain, take the bus, wait for the next bus, and then walk three blocks to get home. And so I did it a couple of times and I still hadn't gotten to the root of the issue, but I could not emotionally and physically and mentally go through it anymore. So I gave up. I'm just like, I can't do that right now. I need support, but I wasn't getting the support. But you know, my parents were doing the best that they could with whatever they were going through. So I'm not, blaming anything or anyone. It's just that was my experience. And then when I got to the point of separating, like choosing, voicing that we need to separate so from my ex, um, I had that wart still on my heel. And I had tried for years and years to use like compound W and try to get it off and you know, I go through these different phases of, of working at it, but not seeing any difference. And it's not like it hurt me. It, it didn't seem to be spreading anywhere, but it was there. And I was finally, after I announced the separation, I was finally like, it's time to get rid of you. And so I got some compound W or whatever it was. And about three times of putting it on and then using a, a nail file to file it down, it was finally totally gone. Gone. Just beautiful skin underneath. And so physically, I have physically, emotionally, energetically, I've been going through a transformation of uh, believing in myself believing I am worthy of a beautiful life, of being treated like I'm, I'm important and I'm so loved, right? Because that's what I give. And surrounding myself with people that 
will love and appreciate me just as much as I love and appreciate them. Basically changing my whole energy and experience of the life of life. And, but as I've been going through it, it's still been tough because I'm still going through layers of maybe some warts that haven't come out physically, right? I haven't gotten warts in, in, in years. It was just the remnants of that one, right? That I needed to take off. I hadn't got anything new since I was a kid, right? Um, yet that one definitely is a representation of what we are all having an opportunity to clear right now. So the energy right now is really helping us to get to the root of that warp, that trauma, that pattern. And if we allow ourselves to feel it and see it, and we need to do things in a different way. You know, if you want to have change, you need to do something differently. And maybe that's having the courage to speak your truth. Maybe that's standing in your power and being your warrior, your warrior self, and know that you are worthy of making choices for yourself to give you the results that you deserve and that you desire, as opposed to like taking scars for like other people in situations, not putting yourself first. That is something that I am new to doing is putting myself first. And in some situations I notice I don't and I'm like, oh, we can catch it now, right? And then we can make a different choice. And sometimes fear can prevent you from moving forward and you just don't move forward at all. Bambi in the headlights and then you can lose an opportunity. So there's an opportunity that's presenting now for you to make a change in your life that will change your experience of it and those around you. So, I'm really thirsty right now. Um, pay attention. Pay attention to what is presenting and for some of you, there's going to be an opportunity. You need to go after it. Look at all the things that have been lining up in a certain area of your life. Certain things that are total blessings that you didn't necessarily expect them to be because maybe you pictured something else happening. Maybe you pictured something that you thought was going to be bigger and better. Yet where you are right now is perfection of your experience. And where you are right now can grow into something beautiful. It do, you don't have to be looking elsewhere, yet opportunities elsewhere will present in divine timing. And then what you are currently in can flourish into something new. So a, a new experience stemming from a seed of passion, of being able to serve and give back and share your light and be around other people who are in those positive vibes. You deserve to have that as opposed to needing to work so hard and be in the thick of heaviness. You know, think about different areas of your life where maybe you've been having heaviness. Things that, you know, surrounding yourselves with mucky, muckiness. It's time to set those boundaries and bring more lightness into your life. It may seem really simple, but the more you make choices to create more lightness, more joy, the more that will ripple effect within your life and to others. Just your immediate peeps, right? That's, that's the only place you really need to make a difference is within your own family, friend group, um, community. 
right? Where you have those interactions. Make choices where you can be spreading your joy, spreading your joy. And to do that, you need to have balance in your life. So make choices in the different areas of your life that create more balance. And so maybe it's going to be choices of how much alcohol you have um, or, or drugs, right? Do you, we could all have balance. You know, I was talking, I was doing an interview with, don't, don't mind me as I scratch my ass. <laughs> um, I was, I did an interview with a representative from CMHA and we were talking about, because, uh, for the month of March, it's problem gambling awareness month. So we were talking about gambling and, and then addictions in general. And when are there, is there a sign where you need some extra support? Where it could be, yeah, where's a sign? What are signs of uh, where it might be in a balanced state? And the main thing that he said, which I think is simple and so beautiful, is it, are you doing something um, regularly that someone in your life has brought up concern you know if they've said i think it might be this might be a problem so notice that if you're questioning hmm is this is this a problem then get to the root of that questioning maybe journal about it so i think the reason why this was brought up is just to look in the different areas of your life how you're eating how you're sleeping um, the type of extracurricular activities that you're doing, the time you're spending, you know, is, is work your priority over family? Is it that, is it more important than spending time with family? Is, or is your love relationship uh, more important than work or, or vice versa? Or is there an equal importance Within your life, do you want to have an equal importance of things like that? Maybe your health, right? Where is that? Is that of equal importance, importance uh, as family is and work is? Okay, so just looking at those different things. And if you do want to have, let's say, an equal balance of time, it's about carving out that time and setting boundaries. It's like you're creating a rule bit book to help you to stay within your balance. You decide what those rules are. We're all so different, right? So, you know, we can, I, I've seen some Instagram posts lately. Maybe it wasn't Instagram. It could have been YouTube. Um, about finding a balance even with social media right? With your phone, with looking at your phone, carving out time when you're not going to be looking at it. And that can, you know, that could open up a whole can of worms with relationships. Because if you're wanting to spend less time on the phone, then you still need to carve out that time when you connect in. We're such an electronic society society now right that and that might it's like laughable that's so basic of course we are right but it really is affecting even our perception of someone loving us with the amount that they connect in you know are they connecting in just to say hey sending in a little emoji or acknowledging a message that you sent so i think it's been ingrained in our society for many people, not everybody, but I know even for me is like, if a friend doesn't respond to me for days, you know, it might be like three or four days before they actually respond, then it could potentially, depending on who they are to me, it might potentially give me the indication that I'm really not that important if it's going to take that long, but it, I know they still love me. I know they still like hanging out with me, but the amount of energy that they're willing to put in might be different than what I was thinking. But it's not that one thing is better than the other. It's just a noticing. 
And I think it is important to match your energy. You match your energy with someone and then you see how it feels. Because if you match their energy and then you think, well, I want to put more, I want to have a friend where I can put more energy. This is just as an example, more energy in and I get more back. Like that's just kind of what I'm looking for. It's like when you're looking for a car, what are those aspects? You know, I definitely need to have a sunroof and heated bum seats, right? I don't know why I said bum first, but heated seats. Like there's certain things that I'm looking for where I'll have satisfaction. So that will be, eat, that will be different for, for each of us. So we need to determine Okay, so if I balance out here, is that fine? Am I happy with having that type of relationship with that person? And then just having more clarity because really not everyone is going to have the same idea of what they want out of a relationship with you. They might have a different idea and a different comfort level and you just need to see whether that actually feels okay. You know, there's a balance between that. And it's important for us to have the communication. So communicating what you need and what you want and what makes you feel loved. And then you can see whether they want to put energy into that and whether putting energy into it is a good match for them and for their priorities and their needs. So sometimes there could be an imbalance there. So you try to find that balance and see if you're okay with it. And when you have that communication, you can have a better understanding of where they're coming from because they might express their love or like to put energy into someone in a different way, you know, just like we all have different love languages. So it's about understand where they're coming from because sometimes we can interpret not feeling loved because of the way they show love, the way they have their priorities. So we just, we might have a distorted perception because they might love you to the fullest, like love you like they've never loved anyone before, but they just show it in different ways and want to give this much energy instead of this much energy, what you're looking for, right? So then you can wrap your head around, well, is that enough for me? Is it enough? Or do I just simply need to change my perception? Because we can have distortions of perception based on what has been ingrained to us. So just like social media, it's been ingraining the needing for, um, oh, what's that word? Experiencing things quickly, I'll just say, like um, gratification. So immediate gratification. Social media has been ingraining that with us. And so when someone doesn't respond or um, give you a call within the three hours that let's say you left a message for them, does does that does your perception of that experience is that coming from a place of distortion based on what society has been ingraining with us right like this is some deep stuff but we have these distortions which which can create this density within our body we don't